Hey everybody, welcome back for another 16-bit beat-em-up edition of Show Reviewkin, where today we are taking a look at a Mega Drive game that kind of lives in the shadow of its SNES counterpart, and that's TMNT Return of the Shredder, or as it's better known, the Hyperstone Heist, which was developed and published by Konami in 1992. This game ditches the time travel plot of Turtles in Time and instead has the teenage Terrapins contending with the Shredder's newest WMD, the titular Hyperstone, a relic from Dimension X that has the ability to shrink anything down to miniature size, including the city of Manhattan. So now the Turtles have to fight their way through a legion of foot soldiers and supervillains to take down the Shredder, cast the Hyperstone back into Dimension X, and return New York to a peaceful state or at least as peaceful as New York City can be. So before getting into the finer points of this game, I'll just answer the question that most people have, which is, do you prefer Hyperstone Heist or Turtles in Time? To which I say, 100%, I prefer Turtles in Time. I think it's the far superior game, but that's not to say that this is in any way a bad game, because it is indeed a great beat-em-up, probably my Second favorite on the console behind Streets of Rage 2, this game features the same basic gameplay as Turtles in Time. It's a beat-em-up, so it's not exactly rocket science. Just beat the hell out of anything that wanders on screen. And there's a bit of a trade-off here because you cannot throw enemies into the screen, which was something especially cool from Turtles in Time, but you do get a button assigned to dashing, which definitely feels a lot better than the auto-dash or the double-tap. This game also plays a bit faster than its SNES counterpart, and overall, I'd say the gameplay is actually just a little bit smoother here. The downside, though, is that there are way fewer stages, even if they are quite a bit longer, and that means that there are also a lot fewer boss fights. Turtles in Time features a ton of villains from the animated series, something like a dozen different bosses, but here we only get six in total, and in stage four, all of the previous bosses are recycled for a boss rush, and that's when the game honestly starts to get a little bit boring. Turtles in Time, on the other hand, changes things up enough between each stage and gives you enough variety that it never gets boring, but that's not the case here. This is still undeniably a great beat-em-up, but if we could have gotten some more stages, more variety in each stage, and definitely more boss battles, this could have been a superior game to Turtles in Time, but as it stands, it's a distant second in the overall gameplay department. Now we come to the graphics and sound, and this is another area where the change in premise has a negative effect on the game in my opinion. So instead of prehistoric Turtlesaurus, bury my shell at Wounded Knee, and Neon Knight Riders, we get a pretty standard lineup of sewers, city streets, and the Technodrome of course. The Ghost Ship and Shredder's Hideout are pretty cool, but again the lack of variety and generally less colorful appearance doesn't do this game any favors. The character sprites look great though, and the game moves along at a very brisk pace, but while playing it, I always think to myself I'd actually love just a straight Mega Drive port of Turtles in Time. The sound design, on the other hand, remains awesome. This soundtrack pretty much just carries over tracks from Turtles in Time, and those songs sound great no matter what, but they do sound especially good coming from the Mega Drive sound chip. Again, we don't get all of the tracks from the SNES, obviously. There's no Old West theme or Neon Knight Riders, which is my personal favorite, but what is here definitely does the source material justice. So while I had some complaints, really only because I was comparing this game to a better one, none of them keep it from being an excellent beat-em-up in its own right. Even if it's not as good as Turtles in Time, it's still one of, if not the best beat-em-ups on the Mega Drive, and that's saying a whole lot. It's TMNT Return of the Shredder, and it'll make you say, I love being a turtle.